Okay, uh, so this is my food cupboard. Uh, we all have one each. Uh, this is Peter's and that's Francis's. Uh, you know, I like, to, as you can see, I like to sort of keep a nice uh, order to all of my things. Uh, like I keep the crisps uh, on the top shelf. Uh, you know, I got some nice apples, some more, and uh, a couple of few more sweet stuff uh, on the middle shelf. And I've got all my all my sauces and stuff on the bottom shelf. And there's. Uh, Nice little bit of pasta too. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about that's about it uh, for my cupboard. And what kind of meals do you cook? Uh, I like to try and cook my own meals as much as I can. Uh, I never never really eat microwave meals. Um, I always try to use uh, the oven cooked meals. You know they're they're a lot healthier. You know it's supposed to be a lot better for you as well. Because uh, it's you know it's, there's a good pro that you can keep away from the uh, the fallout and the radiation that you can get from microwaves. That's uh, that's not how microwaves work. <coughs> what do you mean? Well, microwaves use radio waves to agitate the water molecules in your food, so that vibration is what's heating the food. So is that why they make so much noise? Well, what do you mean? Well, like if a microwave uses radio waves to heat up your food, or something like that. Well, I mean. Is it the radio that's making all that noise inside the microwave? No, the microwave doesn't actually use radio to heat things. It uses radio waves, like electromagnetic waves. Oh, I don't know, I reckon you could maybe, maybe fit a radio in the back of here, you know? There's, there's not a radio in your microwave. Well, I've seen stranger things than that. Like, like my friend, uh, Richard Blake, down on Chance Avenue, he once won a competition that got him a, that got him a refrigerator that had a television on it. And what's wrong with that? Well, well, what's the point then? Oh! What is a juggalo? A juggalo, when you ask what it is, well, fuck if I know. What is a juggalo? I don't know, but I'm down with the clown and I'm down for life, yeah. What is a juggalo? If magic is all we've ever known, then it's easy to miss what really goes on. The Juggalo was born on June 18th, 1992, in the medical tents at Glastonbury Festival. Growing up in the estates of East Hull, the Juggalo displayed early signs of his abnormalities, abnormalities that made it difficult for him to connect with other people. I always found it hard to get along with people around here. Uh, other people just cared about stuff that I could never really relate to, so I always felt like a little bit of an outcast. I think we speak to him maybe once a week. Uh, but even then, it's just like you're asking for the Wi-Fi password. I've just never felt as though I've had that connection with normal people. You know, I've always felt as though there was something different about me, and that keeps them away from me. I don't really know what. It wasn't until 2008 that all this changed, when the Juggler discovered the band that would revolutionise his life forever. <clears throat> so that one there, if you get a look at the close-up, that's Violent J. And it's very next to him, that's Shaggy Too Dope. Uh, and those together make, they're the only two members of the band, Insane Clown Posse. I uh, like what I've got on my t shirt, close up. Right. How many of the persons in this room are related to the band? Uh, I've actually got, uh, I've got quite a few, like, sort of around my room, sort of thing. Uh, like, of this one here, uh, this is uh, probably one of the oldest ones I've got. Uh, looks like from the really early shows, actually, with, with the bands that sort of bands used to tour with and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I've got a few more. Are, are all these posters on here related to the band? Uh, no, not like not every single one of them and stuff like that. You can see about no effects and a few other the sort of punk related bands and other stuff I'm sort of into. Uh, but these, this is, I'd say these ones are actually my favourite because these ones are signed. I got these like at shows and stuff like that. Like, they're given to me uh, by the band. Uh, so that was pretty cool of them. Um, or I got them on eBay and stuff like that for a pretty like pretty decent price and stuff like that. But like I say, it was better when they sort of they gave them to me because that's like they're really good with their fans like that and stuff. And oh, you you can come over here to my wardrobe. Uh, there's uh, just like a couple of like one there, and like these ones up here. They're a little bit tacky looking, but that's just because I went to the library and I that's where I printed them out um, there. So and if you want to come over here and like around what, the room, what was that in there? That, uh, what? In the wardrobe. Uh, what you talking about? On the centre shelf, what was that? Okay, if you don't mind, just don't maybe cutting this back from the film, because, like, I don't really want to get in there, that I've got stuff like that in, you know, in my house. Like, I don't particularly want police going around, if you know what I mean. It's sort of like... 
Why would the police come and look at a dildo? Oh, the dildo! Oh my! Look, I'm okay. I'm sorry about all that sort of covert stuff. Covert stuff. Like, you know, I, I thought you were talking about my bong. <laughs> so that's your dildo. Oh no, that's the dog's dildo. Be up in the sky, there is a rainbow over the heavens. Be up in the sky, there is a rainbow over the. You shouldn't get used to seeing a dildo lying around. Like you've got some maids coming around, and they're coming up the stairs, and they're like, "Oh, what's that?" And you're like, "Oh, well, that's the dog's dildo." They do make good tutorials though. I mean like, the dog wrecked everything, but it's still in one piece. <laughs> but it's a giant cock at the end of the day. <laughs> when the juggler bought his first insane clown posse album at the age of 16, it kickstarted his obsession and worship of the band, as through them he was finally able to find a place where he belonged, within the growing family of the insane clown posse fans. Juggalo is a term that they used at a show back in 1994 uh, to describe their fans. Uh, we all embrace it because uh, we're all kind of unified by that name, you know? It's, each of us is a Juggalo and together we're all Juggalos. Uh, there it is. Right. This one right here, this, uh, this is the Great Malenko. Uh, this was actually their third album, I think. I uh, think there that's... Close up that's Malenko, I think. Uh, but this was actually the first album that uh, made any kind of reference to Juggalos and stuff like that because before they only ever really sort of did that kind of thing like life and stuff like that. So I thought that was a cool little sort of uh, nuance, I suppose you could sort of call it. Uh, and this one, this is the, another album uh, called Bizarre. Uh, this came out about the, well, came out the exact same day as another album, uh, the release of Bizarre. Uh, which I thought actually was actually a pretty clever idea. Isn't that a little confusing? No, why? Well, they've got very similar names. That's the joke. Oh. Right. Uh, anyway. Right. Oh my. Right. This one right here. This one. This is my absolute favorite. Right. It's got all of my favorite songs on it. This one. This one is called. The great, the amazing Jackal Brothers, sorry. Right, this has more of my favourite songs on than any of these fucking albums ever did. Like, it just, I really, really like this album, I'm sorry. And which would you say is your favourite Insane Clown Posse song overall? I should have people. He plays it non-stop and it's real aggressive lyrics like coming out of, his, out of the room. And like, he lives across the hallway from me and thinks he's a psychopath. Like most Insane Clown Posse fans, the Juggalo has long been deemed a public enemy in his local area due to his intimidating dress sense, makeup, and overly aggressive music taste. I think people are scared because they don't really understand what I understand. Like they've never really been involved in the world that, that I'm involved in. So they don't really see the bigger picture. Uh, but if they just like gave the band like an insane clown posse a chance then they'd really appreciate the message that they're trying to spread. So which song is this you're going to be playing for us? Now the song I'm going to play for you is called To Catch a Predator by the Insane Clown Posse. Uh, this one because it's a really good example of why the band's lyrics can be strongly misinterpreted by people. Okay. So, yeah, 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 please. So, yeah, that's that. So, how would you say these lyrics are supposed to be interpreted? Well, it's saying that paedophilia is wrong. But it's portrayed in their plans to entrap and murder a paedophile. It's supposed to be metaphorical. See, I don't think it is, and I can see why people would get upset by lyrics like these. Well, you know, it's just a part of their comedy, you know? They're a horrorcore rap group. 
You know, they're just trying to spread a, a good message with that, that horror theme. But the horror theme stems from their open hatred towards paedophiles and their desire to murder them. There's nothing funny about that at all. It's dark humour, you know, dark humour. You know, it's just it's just the way they do things, you know, they're, they're not literal with it, you know, they're just trying to spread, make people aware of certain things by bringing that horror shocking theme to them and you know it's all literal they're not really they're not literal they're not actually going to go around and kill people they don't murder anyone but the things they're saying could be taken literally by some of their listeners do you understand why this is dangerous and why outsiders then scared of this band well maybe but you know they've got songs about having sex with dead bodies but you know i'm a listener i've never once thought to myself oh yeah i bet these guys go around fucking dead bodies yeah absolutely well i'd hope not well, there you go, you know, their their idea is to shock people with their music, so if you're feeling shocked right now, then they've clearly done their job. Okay, well, do you have any less aggressive songs to play? Uh, so. well, this one's actually quite a nice one. Convincing this y'all meaning in town Your homie standing at his back While you're kicking his head around But responsibility is there I can't lie though I'd have been plucked his fucking eyeball out With a chicken bar I'm crazy as fuck I'll rip your piercings off And now my homies are holding me back So I don't know Um, what's this one called? Uh, this one's called Homies Uh, it's basically about how, like You know, if you really want to kill your boss You, you know that your homies are going to be uh, back Backpacking back you up, yeah, yeah, I get it I don't think anyone will ever really get that kind of music. I mean, I get what he's trying to say about them, but to me it's just two guys trying to get you pumped up for killing people. So what kind of music do you guys listen to? Just uh, dance stuff, really. Whatever's playing in the clubs at the moment, but um, nothing as aggressive as that. And would you mind playing me an example? Yeah, sure, we got this. This is good. See, I think that music's just as aggressive as his music. Oh, fuck off. Well, no, it's not, mate. Well, oh, why, fuck off. Well, why isn't it? I don't know, like, five lyrics, in it. Despite the select few who find issue in the Juggalo's lifestyle, most of the community is now accepting of him, and so he continues to live out his odd lifestyle in the comfort of his hometown, though it is still not without its setbacks. There's not really a big Juggalo community in the UK. I mean, I don't think I've met any other Juggalos ever, actually. And, you know, if I did, then it would have been like at some kind of fun fair or something like that. You know, I probably just thought there were normal clowns or, who worked there or something. So this is just one of the uh, Juggalo Facebook pages. Uh, like, there are a couple of them. Uh, this one's only got like 230 likes. Uh, that one's got like 224. And this one is like ooh, 188. Oh, that's it's not even actually. It's not even as good, actually. So I don't know. I guess I guess Juggalos just don't really use Facebook that much, and I don't particularly like understand Twitter and all that sort of other bollocks, and fucking shit. So like, so I suppose it's just um, it's just me. I suppose I don't really have anyone else. He's like the only one of his kind. Yeah, like uh, back on the used to bring big cats from abroad and let him go. And uh, let them loose. We got too big. Did that really happen? Yeah, yeah, my old town. Like the beast of Bogman Moor. The uh, big cats. I thought that was a wolf. No, nah, no, nah, man, it was a cat. It's the juggler's dream to one day move to the United States to be with his own kind. But for now, that dream is far out of reach. Yeah, I have a pretty hard time holding down like any jobs that I get. Uh, so obviously, it's quite hard to to get any funding for like the, the lifestyle that I'm trying to lead and like I import a lot of Frego which is what it's the drink that they it's the drink that they drink over there and stuff like that which uh, they drink it because it's like supposed to be quite cheap uh, but when I like import it because because of the tax it's actually like 14 pounds or something like that and like with the makeup as well for me it's, it's a little bit expensive but, you know. and what would you do for a job if uh, you were allowed into America uh, I'd like to think, I've thought a lot about, like, teaching people about England, I think, because I, I have a friend uh, in Thailand who teaches English over there and stuff like that, uh, but 
the Americans, obviously, they are they are already speak English and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, they they seem to like us, so why not? Whether or not he will ever make it to the States is unclear, but for now the Juggalo will continue to reside in his hometown, where he continues to shock and confuse the locals, to whom he has become something of a legend. Everyone knows him. Everyone. I mean, he's the first thing you see when you walk into a room. He's always got that fucking clan makeup on. He's pretty hard to miss. Makes it easy to find him, though, if we'll lose him in a supermarket. I know people think I'm weird, but I was weird even before I put on the makeup. You know, it just makes me feel safe. Like, I belong somewhere, and as long as people don't give me any bother, I don't mind them talking about me. You know, it, it's quite nice to be recognised like that. You know, it makes me feel almost a little bit famous, actually, and that's, that's nice. Do you have a message you want to pass on to people? Live life to the fullest. Don't ever let people tell you that you're wrong just because you don't like what they do. And never let anything stop you from showing your true colours or following your dreams. Unless you're a murderer, because you shouldn't murder people. It's illegal. Some meds and they all coming over soon. Have a